So there's a misconception that if you're single, you are incomplete, perhaps damaged, salvaged, and you won't be happy until you find your one. And that is not true. That is bullshit. It is a message that has been fed to us by media and advertising. The truth is, when you're single, you have the richest soil for growth. That's why I created this podcast. And unlike other podcasts, this one is host-driven, not guest-driven. That means I will be rotating health and wellness experts three times a week to give you the giant box of wellness crayons, not just the primary colors, so you can start building a meaningful life. It's time to give singlehood a cape. Why do I call breakups expired relationships? I get this question often. I'm actually working on a new book. That is why I am doing this inside a hotel room. I'm on what I call a writing leave, burying myself uh, into my words for three days to get a jump start. So first I want to say that I understand that a relationship is not something we should compare to milk. You know, to say that a relationship has expired, I think can be minimizing. I think it could be borderline disrespectful. Um, Even if the relationship was toxic, even if the relationship was unhealthy, it's still two people with, you know, good intentions who did the best they could with where they were at. And so to say that your relationship has expired, I understand, um, can be a bit wrong you know, distasteful. I remember I was on a Dak Shepard's Armchair Expert uh, podcast and he saw one of my videos and I, I know I know that he disagreed with calling relationships uh, expired. And I think, you know, he, he, he had something to say about that. I remember his eyes turned um, a little bit sideways and he questioned why I call breakups, expired relationships. But before we got into it, and I wanted to know, I wanted to know, I was very curious what he thought, uh, because obviously he didn't agree. And uh, before we got into it, I I don't know why or how I said this, but I let him know that when I was 12, I had sex with a plum. And, uh, <laughs> and of course, that threw a wrench in the conversation and suddenly we're talking about... Um, a curious 12 year old knowing that it didn't feel like uh, apple pie. Anyway, so I get I get uh, uh, people questioning why I would call a breakup uh, an expired relationship. It's not about for me if it is uh, wrong or right. What's important to me because I help people going through uh, uh, breakups. Um, it's about what's effective. And what's effective is, and also for me too, I've been through many breakups. I've been through a divorce and many three-year relationships, right? And so I've been single many times. I've had relationships. I've had relationships for most of my life, but um, they've all been long relationships, uh, meaning three years plus. And um, yeah, so I've, I've been broken up with, I've broken off the relationship, uh, I've been hurt, I've hurt people, all of that. And what's been helpful for me is the reframe of seeing the relationship as an exploration instead of a breakup because when you see something as a breakup, it is lined with shame. It is lined with fault and blame and pointed fingers. And there's also room for internalization because when you say um, that I'm going through a breakup, meaning that something broke, you may also wonder, a lot of my clients do, you may default to, well, is something wrong with me, right? When you say that you're going through a breakup and uh, when something is lined with blame, uh, chances are you're going to blame yourself as well. So if you reframe it, and by the way, I just want to say the power of a reframe is to produce a different feeling by seeing something at a uh, from a different angle, right? And then the different feeling will ultimately produce a different behavior. So when you 
reframe a breakup to an expired relationship, <clears throat> and this isn't just theory, it's something I practice many times, it's been super helpful to me. Uh, when you reframe a breakup to an expired relationship, there is a, an acceptance, there is a letting go, there is an understanding that what happened may not have been your fault, but something that is greater than both of you, right? There is also weight put on your story. When you see that your breakup was an expiration and it wasn't meant to go a day more or a day less, it means that you have a story. It means that this is an act break. It means that there is more. It means that this is not tied to your worth. And so for me, the mantra from my you know early breakup to divorce to many other uh, expired relationships to know that the relationship has, has expired gave me so much more traction when it come when it came to accepting the relationship right and and if you don't accept then even if you're holding on to a glimmer of hope uh, if you don't radically accept something then there's resistance and with resistance eventually comes suffering, right? There's a lot of spinning and wondering. And I think it's this holding on that we do when we go through a breakup that gets us to um, fall into what I call our, our slippery well. You know, we start playing back. We start uh, all the what ifs. What if I did this? What if we had a round two? Uh, what if he did that? And then when you start saying what if, you're not accepting that this is in fact over, so you're not able to really move on. Now you're starting to live in the past. And this is, I think, the first ditch. This is where people fall into before they get any traction. And this is why I reframe a breakup to your relationship has expired. And if you do it as a practice, right? If it is a mantra, if the days that are tough and you are uh, feeling lonely and eating your feelings and wondering what you could have done or what you can do now, if you reframe from I'm going through a breakup too. I'm going through an expired relationship. There's this kind of, I don't know about you, but there's this surrendering for me. The relationship has expired. Um, okay, well then, what can I take from this? What are the lessons? How can I take those lessons and start moving forward? How can I heal? How, how can I bring more to the table? How can I shed the old so I can now embrace the new? That's where my mind goes, at least a little bit more than if I'm going through a breakup. And I think that's empowering, not depowering. So whenever there is judgment, whenever there is blame, whenever there is shame and pointed fingers, those are all depowering, right? Uh, whenever there is room for internalization, you, it's a depowering feeling. You can feel less than, you can feel de defective, you can feel salvaged, you can feel um, unlovable, right? If you can get to a place where you are taking any kind of ownership, where you are feeling like, okay, I learned from that, what can I do to bring more to the table? What can I do to be a better partner? What can I do to have a better relationship with myself? When you start asking yourself those questions and they're coming from an organic place, not a workbook, then you have tipped and you are now in more of an empowering state, right? And I understand that when you're going through this, um, they're not like light switches, right? You don't suddenly um, get a sense of empowerment and stay there. Uh, that would be amazing, but usually that's not the case. Usually what happens is that there's an ebb and flow there's a, um, some days it's hard, some days it's easy, right? And when that happens, you got to pull back and know that what you're going through is cumulative. 
there's a lot of grieving happening and like grieving you know it, it, it's kind of random like some days you have peace with it and then you know two seconds later you're sitting on the toilet bawling sobbing uncontrollably right i've been there and so in those moments you have to pull back and know that it is cumulative and that overall um, you are moving forward and sometimes it's a step back sometimes we snap back in order to move forward but step one i think really is acceptance and it's something that you really have to hold on to with two hands because uh some days you're not going to accept some days you're going to have other feelings right um you're going to go on this roller coaster ride to acceptance and it's going to have loops and turns and all that um and to get to acceptance i think it's easier to reframe your breakup as an expired relationship I don't think that every relationship is meant to expire. I do believe that most of our relationships are meant to expire because it's through the expiration, it's through the um, breaking of our hearts, you know, and looking back and reflecting and learning about ourselves and who we are and and how we're wired, right? And also um, what we want and don't want. It, it, it's through all of that. It's rich soil. And the soil is richest after a, a relationship has expired. Not in the relationship. In the relationship, it's really hard to, um, as they say, work do the work or work on yourself. or ref- you know, it, It's usually when we lose something that we now are able to reflect. And so that growth soil is really rich. And so relationships are meant to expire so we can grow, so we can evolve. And we can bring more to the table in our next relationship, right? Not every relationship is meant to expire. I don't believe that. I do believe most of our relationships are meant to re- uh, expire. And I remember, and I believe that that's how we, uh, truly learn about ourselves, right? That's how we're thrown into our um, hero's journey where where we're slaying our internal dragons and returning to the village changed. That's been the case for me. I think expired relationships, divorces, you know, I I think um, they can be a rite of passage. Usually people who go through them Um, go through some kind of inner journey, some kind of transformation. And that's the value, I think, of of any relationship, not just the time you spend in the relationship, but also how the ending of that relationship has been a catalyst to your growth and learning and understanding and redefining. And so that's all, you know, the nectar of when relationships end. And the reason why we're supposed to go through many or most of our relationships are meant to expire is because uh, there's this continual growth cycle happening, you know? I don't think we should go into relationships knowing that they're gonna end. Um, I think we should go into them uh, with best intentions and, and whatever you want, right? I mean, if, if you want the relationship to end, that's on you, but if you're looking for um, a, a permanence, I wouldn't put a lot of weight on that because it pulls you out of the relationship. But if you're if you're wanting something um, to last forever, that's okay. Uh, but also, we've been programmed. We've been programmed that uh, when you love someone, that to you know the value in the love is the ring or the promise. And I think that is misleading and dangerous. And I think that creates a steep cliff to fall off of. So, part of redefining. The breakup is nicked by a relationship is uh, my way of ripping that poster down, you know, because the truth is relationships do end and we have to accept to move forward and heal. It's part of the human exchange and it's part of the human experience. So that's my long winded answer to the question, John, why do you? say breakups are expired relationships. I hope that episode was helpful. Hey, listen, if you want to share your singlehood journey, if you've gone somewhere, come back. If you have revelations and wisdom, please share your story. It's going to help other people. Nothing makes us feel 
more connected than hearing other people's stories. So just send me the audio of your story and you could just record it directly from your phone and email it to theangrytherapist at gmail.com. Also, if you want our Single on Purpose newsletter, go to singleonpurpose.life. That's singleonpurpose.life. You will get tools and articles and other people's stories and also uh, Zoom links to private gathers. So if you want to join our community, go to singleonpurpose.life. Thank you for listening. Be well. We hope you tell a friend. Hey, before you go, I want to invite you to the Single on Purpose private community online. It's off of social media. No ads, no algorithms. We got forums. We got live groups. We got webinars. And we have social hangs. We also have offline in-person hangs happening soon. So check us out. Go to singleonpurpose.life. That's singleonpurpose.life. And I will see you inside.